Um, hi, I'm joined today by um, Adele Cutting, who is the audio director at Soundcuts, um, who I believe mostly work in the in the gaming industry. Is that right? Yes, uh, we design sound effects, we create music, and I direct speech for mainly games, but also TV series and other uh, multimedia entertainment. Fantastic, and thank you so much for joining me today. Um, again, I was saying this is the first time that I've actually managed to do one of these interviews in the school, other than being propped up in the corner of my son's bedroom, which is really nice. Um, <laughs> so if I could just uh, ask you kind of just a little bit about uh, about yourself and what you do. So. Um, starting off with really kind of what's your job, what is it you do, and if you have an average day, uh, what does that look like? Okay, so um, I'm normally an audio director, that's my title, yeah. uh, so I look after all the audio that you'll find in a computer game, so be that the music, the sound effects, or the speech. Uh, I work in a team, so there are 15 people here who all work at Sound Cuts, yeah. and uh, we work on multiple different projects simultaneously. So some of our recent, some of the recent work I've done is I was the speech director on Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Gods and Monsters, wow. and I was the audio director years ago on the Harry Potter game franchise. Yeah. Uh, but we work in TV as well. So if any of the children have seen Pinky Malinky, uh, the music for Pinky Malinky was done. Uh, <laughs> Uh, here at Sam Katz, uh, oh, David great. Is the composer. Yes. Uh, so that's my job. So basically, it's anything and everything to do with audio. So yeah. I'll record and create the sound effects, and then we'll have to put them in game so that when a person walks along, you'll hear the footsteps, or if there's a big fright moment, you'll hear scary music. Yeah. Uh, so we literally create all the assets, and the other part of our job is actually putting them into the game so that they play back at the at the right time. Um, I don't really have an average day because uh, it's 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 all over the place. So some yeah. days I could be uh, editing music. So today I've got a game that's going to come out next year and um, I've played the game, captured the levels and I'm going through and with the the composer sent me music and I'm arranging the music so it works with the action that's going on in the scene. Wow. And then exporting it out into WAV files and then putting it, programming it into the game so it plays back correctly. Yeah. Um, yet I do lots of different things. So tomorrow morning I'll be reviewing what other people on the game have been doing. Um, the next day I could be in a studio directing actors yeah. and getting the right performance from the actors and actually putting that into the game. Uh, because we're working on lots of different projects, uh, I have to do a lot of management as well. Mm. So a lot of scheduling, budgets, invoicing, yeah. um, all the stuff with HMRC and tax as well. <laughs> so, so lots of different stuff. So I guess that's kind of uh, almost one of the misconceptions of the gaming industry is that people spend all time sitting around playing games, testing out levels and, and seeing if they can find finding bugs in the game. But actually, there, <laughs> there's, so, there's so much more going on yeah. behind the scenes that people have realised, I guess, isn't there? Yeah, it's almost like an industry within an industry. Because yeah. there, there's so many different departments in games. So you've got QA who do the game testing, which sounds super fun. It sounds like, <laughs> yeah, all I do is play games. But yeah. it's, not, it's, it's repeating the same. If something happens and you find a bug, you have to do it again and again and again and try and make that bug happen to see what what yeah. things you've done in what order to actually get there. So that's quite, you've got to be very organised. Less about and enjoying then, the game, more about playing the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you've got the art department and you've got character artists and you've got the people who, uh, character artists who actually design what the person's going to look like in the game. Then the modelers and riggers who make the character and then put all the bones in. And then you've yeah. got the animators who animate it. You've got world artists who design the terrain, all the, all the yeah. maps. All the all the props and furniture. Uh, then you've got designers who obviously put it all together, put the game mechanics in there. Producers, dev managers. There's a whole. There's a and whole. All the, yeah, and all the support yeah. staff as well. The office workers who have to make sure. Oh. Yeah, HR. You know, it's a big. <laughs> yes. <industry. laughs> That's um. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those. What I found with a lot of these interviews I've done is, when you ask somebody about their job on the surface, it sounds like. It's a very, very simple and straightforward job. And then you kind of almost open up Pandora's box and you see everything else that's happening on behind the scenes. Yeah, it's a fun place to work, though. I have to say it's um, everybody's it's very hard to get into. Yeah. Um, so everybody is passionate about what they do. 
So it's very rare you'll work with somebody who isn't completely into what they're doing and motivated. Yeah. And I think that's really exciting. And I think also because games, um, even though we're using the same tools such as Unity or Unreal or WYS or XMOD or, you yeah. know, whatever, Maya and the artist tools, um, the game itself is constantly changing and improving the technology and breaking new boundaries. So there's a lot of figuring out how to do it in this new platform. Yeah. So it really keeps you on your toes because your brain's constantly, you can't ever <laughs> you can't rest. Your, yeah, you can't say, right, I know it now. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been doing it for 25 years and every game is completely different. Every game I've got to learn something new, but I like that because it keeps you, keeps you motivated. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, um, I mean, you've just mentioned you've been in the industry for, for 25 years and I know recently you've you've started Sound Cuts uh, yes. yourself. Um, but what, what's kind of been your journey leading up to this point? How did you get here? Oh, um, there was a lot of luck, to be honest. <laughs> um, I mean, I knew uh, I really enjoyed theatre. So um, even though I didn't do drama GCC, I did lots of theatre work. I yeah. uh, was in like my local production company and arts groups, but I did a lot of music. And so I was in all the bands and orchestras, you know, yeah. and the, the county band and what have you. Um, and that's I just loved sort of like the stage and music and or the arts basically yeah. but actually my other two favorite subjects were maths and physics um oh, yeah. yeah so i ended up doing maths physics and music a levels um a combination i like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well i enjoyed it yeah and um at the time i thought that was really bonkers uh because normally well when i was at school it was assumed if you did music you'd want to do geography and english you know That's and if you did physics and maths you do chemistry yeah. but actually I found out some of the courses that I wanted to apply for actually you needed maths physics and music yeah so it was total luck <laughs> that's what I'd have to take um but I'd had lots of um I was sort of like really intrigued by it so um I think I first realized I was really interested in sound for film when I watched a film called singing in the rain and it was all about how the old talkies were recorded onto wax yeah. uh, wax cylinders and I thought wow that's amazing how's it done now and it's all like piqued my interest <laughs> and then uh yeah and then I, I I got work experience so I did work experience at BBC Radio York and then Yorkshire TV yeah and then I went to university and I did a BSc music honours at City University, um, which I really wanted to be in London. Yeah. You know? And there weren't many courses that did sound design. There's quite a lot now. But mm. when I was there, it was um, City was the best for me because there was a sound recording, acoustics, electroacoustic music element. Yeah. But it was still, there was lots of performance in there and all the stuff that I really <laughs> enjoyed. stuff you learned, yeah. Yeah, and I just really wanted to be in London because I grew up in Yorkshire. And so I wanted to be in a really big city, you know. <laughs> uh, I wanted to sort of like, yeah. you know, spread my wings a bit. That's it. And then whilst I was there, uh, I got more work experience um, with BBC. Um, and then following on from that, uh, I applied to the National Film and Television School. Uh, and I did a short course there. Uh, it was two years, which doesn't sound that short. It was called a <laughs> short course. Uh, yeah. But it was really, it was really good because the first year we were sort of like working with the other students uh, on their student films and so yeah. learning that way. But the second half, it was working in the industry. So I got placements and um, I was quite lucky that the first placement I went to, when I finished, they offered me a full time job. Oh. and. So I said, could I, can I take the job? <laughs> I won't finish the course, <laughs> but it's sort of why I'm here. And yeah. they said, yeah, as long as you do the coursework, you can finish the course, Brilliant. but we'll let you start work because the whole point yeah. is that you get a job. So if we're telling you not to, then, you know, that's silly. Yeah. So um, I did that. Um, I did a short placement at EA and they also came back and offered me a job. So um, I went to went to look around on a short contract because I was contracting in film. So I went on a short contract and I was amazed because to be honest, I hadn't really played. Girls didn't play games then. Girls all play games now. Yeah. But when I was growing up, it was very much boys play games and girls don't. Yeah. So I'd played Lemmings. I played Donkey Kong. I played a few things, but you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what to expect. So when I turned up and it was the, it was basically exactly the same equipment 
as what I was using in film. Yeah. And I was really amazed at the stuff they were doing, you know, because I was work the first project I worked on was a, a Wing Commander game, which um, was like the first interactive film. So it had film elements and game elements. And uh, I thought, yeah, I think this is fab. So I thought I'll stay and then I'll go back to film. And then yeah. they offered me a full time job. <laughs> uh, so I thought, oh, I'll go, I'll go and I'll do it. And I want because I want to see how far I can get. Yeah. And then I'll go back to film. But they kept designing technology. So first of all, I was like, oh, I'm, I can't get the footsteps in sync. You know, how can I? This is just like because in film, that's really easy. You know, yeah. I was like, I you just match against the, yeah, the, yeah. But it, it, the technology of the games just couldn't let me do it. So the programmer designed a system so I could tag all the animations. So as a foot went down, it would play. And I thought, well, I'll just stay and use that system. And then <laughs> they design something else. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> no, I'm just going to use this system. And, th and that's how it went on. And yeah. um, I worked my way up from from being a junior sound designer to being the senior audio director at the studio. Wow. Yeah, so that was it was good. It was a massive learning curve, but thoroughly yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's amazing that yeah the so i'm trying to, your story is very much a uh quite similar to how a lot of people i guess get into those kind of industries is starting at the bottom rung and then just finding your niche and working your way up and through yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um so kind of on that journey then what would you consider to be your kind of your career highlight the thing that you kind of look back on most fondly um and was it something, the, the question I'm the more interested in, I guess, is was it something that you were in control of and you made happen for yourself? Or was it something that kind of happened to you out of your control? Well, there have been, there've been lots of career highlights, to be honest. I've been mm. really fortunate. I think uh, two of the obvious ones would be um, I was part of a team, not just me, <laughs> obviously, because <laughs> they're, they're teams of people. Yeah. Uh, but we won two BAFTAs. Wow. And that was that was pretty yeah that's cool. pretty big <laughs> yeah so that <laughs> that's was probably, pretty cool yeah they were probably my highlights and then uh after i started sound cuts uh we also started the first award we won for sound cuts being the best audio outsourcer for, for the wow. games industry that was a massive deal <laughs> even though like people know baftas people don't know develop awards in the yeah. general public <laughs> uh, but to me that was probably even bigger because it was something that I'd started and you know we got the team together and so I was just I was incredibly proud of what me and the team at Soundcuts had created that we were actually being recognized for our for our work so I think that was a massive one yeah that's, yeah that's lovely isn't it it's, it was almost that yes I am I am very good at my job and yeah. and, people rec and people in my industry recognize it as well yeah it's, it's sort of like the the your peers saying yes yeah. yeah that's it and it made it made the uh the risk of starting my own company worthwhile yeah you know it was good yeah. um so <laughs> it sounds like a complete contrast now but uh, at any point kind of uh, on your journey have you faced any kind of setbacks or redirections uh something that quite hasn't gone how you wanted it and how was it that you dealt with those kind of situations well, I think the biggest redirection is I never thought games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was always thinking film and TV. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a, a complete shift, but I found it super interesting, you know, so I'm still working in it. Um, I think the other thing which is widely seen as a negative, but actually I still I think of it as a positive, really. Um, so back in uh, 2011, um, 2011, yes. Um, EA made our entire studio redundant. So we went into work one morning. Uh, the big cheeses from America came in. A big company meeting was called and we were all told we didn't have jobs anymore. Wow. And that is quite devastating because yeah. you see lots of people who are, uh, you know, who've just got babies, who've just bought a house and now they're thinking, how can I afford the mortgage? You know, it's really yeah. scary. But actually, I'd sort of like for a while been thinking I want to start my own outsourcing company, but I would never have left EA because it was like massive company, That's it. good job, you know, really, you know, it felt stable. And all of a sudden, the thing that was keeping me wasn't stable. Yeah. And uh, so I came home and said to my husband, I think I'm going to start my own company. 
and he said yeah do it <laughs> so yeah i thought well what you know if there's any time is this time yeah uh, so i thought you know what i'm going to start my own company and if it fails it fails and i'll yeah. apply for another job somewhere else but i've got to give it a go and luckily it just built up from strength to strength as i say it started off just as me yeah. you know sort of working out <laughs> then, you know then yeah. A lot of the team from me, I joined me. So Dave, who's he's the right hand man here, he's he, you know, he was somebody I worked with at EA, and then you know, lots of other members have, have come on. So actually, it's pretty much the same crew as it was back at EA. Uh, but we've got <laughs> lots of we've got lots of new stuff as well, and lots of juniors uh, who have joined us. But um, yeah, so that was probably the worst situation. Yeah. But something positive came out of it. Yeah, absolutely yeah. turned it around in your favour. Um, so earlier on, you mentioned kind of uh, at school, you you loved the performing side of things, uh, music, and and also you kind of had that that contrast of loving the uh, the kind of the side, the physics and the math side of sciences. Yes. Um, so one of those questions that uh, students are always not necessarily asking me because I'm so inspirational, but asking other teachers that <laughs> <laughs> is when am I ever going to use this in real life, sir? When when do I ever need to know about you know, the common denominator of, of fractions or when am I ever going to learn about mitochondria in a cell? When's that going to be useful for me in my life? Um, have you got any experiences where one of those random obscure facts or one of those random obscure things that you learned while at school has, uh, I say random obscure, sorry, it's got very purposeful information, uh, <laughs> has come back uh, and, and kind of and helped you? Um. Well, I mean, computer games can be quite technical. So when you're um, integrating things in game, quite often you're worried about ratios and multiples. And so yeah. you, there is a lot of math you have to do in your head quite. I mean, <laughs> not as much as I used to. I mean, I think when uh, when we were working on PlayStation 1, we had a format called VAG and a loop would only work if it was a, I think it was a multiple of like 114 <laughs> samples. So you had to count how many samples was in your web file and then make sure it was divisible um, by that that number. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think definitely there are elements of maths and I think it's the the way you're taught to think through maths and science that have been most, uh, most useful for me in games yeah. uh, because games is technology and everything sort of ifs or ors, if this can't happen, can that happen? Yeah. But but what if this is another case? <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's I think the thinking behind it is definitely super useful. I yeah. don't, you know, I think that's something that if you it's something that you have to learn if you haven't learned it at school, that that sort of like methodology and logical step. Log yeah, exactly. And uh sort of like just uh theory, I suppose a lot is computer programming what you learn in computer programming is stuff that i have to think about but the math stuff yes especially when you're dealing with uh budgets and you know you have to work out percentages and profit margins yeah and, you know profit and loss. yeah you do yeah it's it's super handy <laughs> <laughs> um and I, I won't keep you much longer i've got one more question for you um which is the the classic cliche question of if you could go back and give your 13, 14 year old self any advice, uh, career advice, life advice, anything like that, what what would you say? Uh, I would say. Be more confident. I'm, I know I probably come across as being confident <laughs> now, but I definitely wasn't. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I definitely wasn't so much so that when we left uh, film school, um, there was only two of us on our course at film school and one girl left and she was given, I shouldn't really say this, but a crate of beer. She was, she was the right age. Yeah. Uh, I was given assertiveness in women, a book. I was like, what? It's rubbish. <laughs> but do you know what? I, the, the, my tutor, I think he was very maternal and he could see that I needed just more confidence. So I really wish I'd have had it earlier on. Uh, just think some things might have clicked a little bit sooner if I'd have just had more assertiveness. Yeah. yeah, that's lovely. Oh, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And uh, no it, honestly, it's been, it's been so lovely to catch up and, and have a chat about this. It's really, um, I'm again, I'm learning stuff every time I have one of these interviews and I'm learning more and more. But this particular one, 
Uh, I've learned so much about the industry, so much more available in that games industry and in that, not even in the games industry, but in the, uh, those students that are interested in, in music and sound design and, and that artistic creative side that isn't necessarily uh, art focused, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, it's very, it's very collaborative. And one thing I would say to people, if they do, if they are interested, is um, all over the UK and the world, there are things called game jams. Yeah. And it's sort of like to get involved in game jams, get Unity, start messing around with it, you know, get games like Dreams, you know, because yeah. you can actually build your own games and levels oh, within brilliant. within Dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. No props. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> and I will. Um, uh, I'm sure. Well, what I'd love to do uh, once all this COVID is finished is uh, is invite people into to possibly run some small uh, workshops or small uh, assemblies or something like that. If, if you'd be interested, it'd be lovely to, to see you join us for those. No, can be in, as I say, as I said before, there's uh, not many, there's not a 50-50% split yeah. of women in the games industry. So I think it's really important that girls see it as a viable option. So Absolutely. yes, totally up for it. Fantastic, I love it. All right, thank you so much. Great stuff. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.